I'm seeing it all over this platform. Preppers here on YouTube are stumped. These are supposed to be people that got a plan for everything. They know what's gonna happen before it even happens. And even these guys, they're stumped. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, we're talking about a paradigm shift that I'm seeing all over YouTube with prepping channel hosts, at least any that are you know five years old or, or, or older than that. Uh, this is something that is resulting from a landscape change that's happening all over our world right now. Uh, and it has YouTube preppers, I think, kind of struggling, trying to figure out what's our relevancy in this new world. I think we definitely are relevant because we have skills and knowledge uh, that is you know, more useful now perhaps than it's ever been before. But uh, because of the, the new sort of world that we're living in right now, uh, it is leaving a lot of us kind of trying to figure out well, what is our role in this. Uh, at the end of this video, we're also gonna be talking about a major danger, not just to YouTube preppers, but to anybody uh, who considers themselves a prepper. If you consider yourself to be someone who's prepared, at least more prepared than other people you know, in your family, in your area, this is something that could be incredibly, I, I would say will be incredibly dangerous to you, uh, you know, that results from some of this uh, paradigm shift that we're seeing in the world all around us. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. Very important topic. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, critical to your life to think about this ahead of time, uh, you know, it, it, especially as it relates to the danger that we're going to talk about at the end of the video. Um, but it's not a very visually interesting video. So uh, as we do so often uh, here on my channel, uh, while we talk about things that aren't visually interesting, we're going to take a visual tour of the homestead here. And specifically, we're going to take a walk down to the mailbox. We live out in the country here. And the mailbox isn't just a 30 second walk to the end of our driveway. Our mailbox is a half an hour away. So uh, we're gonna uh, show kind of what our, our, it's probably like twice a week, we'll go down to the mailbox uh, and uh, you know, <laughs> just empty it out so it doesn't get too over overburdened. That's part of country living. I love living out in the country, but there, you know, there's upsides and downsides. And one downside is that, uh, you know, it's more than 30 seconds to get to your mailbox. On the flip side though, it's a family walk, it's togetherness time, it's exercise, it's being outdoors, those are all positive things, although sometimes it doesn't feel that positive when it's like uh, maybe 40 degrees out and raining. <laughs> so uh, you can uh, enjoy on a non-rainy day what it's like for us to just do a simple task like running to our mailbox. So let's talk about the topic in this video. So what we're talking about is the fact that the world has changed. We live in a different world today, clearly, to most people anyway, than we did, you know, for uh, three or four years ago. You know, in this stuff, started coming to a head with COVID, but this is all due to things that have been baked into the cake for decades and decades. And it's just, you know, COVID happened to be there right at the cusp of it so that, you know, a lot of people have been blaming COVID for, COVID for it. Uh, but this is stuff that was, uh, it was developing in our system. It was inevitable that this stuff was going to come to a head. And it just feels like, you know, now's the time when all these things are starting to come to a head. But the point is the world is different. And how do preppers relate to this new world? Well, the way I, I kind of look at that is uh, to look at like, well, what was the relevancy of prepping channels, uh, you know, before all these changes happened? Well, I think the prepping channels prior to this had two main roles. One was to advocate for the idea that uh, things can happen in the world that you would do well to prepare for. Uh, to suggest that the idea like massive wildfires are possible, floods are possible, uh, supply chain shortages are possible, pandemic diseases are possible, wars are possible, massive droughts are possible, massive cro crop failures are possible. Uh, all of these things are potentials in our world that uh, could happen and it would be good to be ready for them ahead of time. Well, how is that relevant to today's world where all of those things aren't just hypothetical potentials, but they are actively happening all around us? Is there really a role for preppers to be trying to advocate that people need to take these things seriously if these things are literally unfolding all around us? There are people who are living in the world right now that still have the blinders on, where they uh, are pretending as though these things are just cyclical or it's a short-term thing or it's you know, they're not really even happening or they're not as serious as they are and that they're not headed in an even more serious direction. There are people with the blinders on, but those people, uh, you know, if 
if what's going on in the world right now isn't enough to convince them that the things that going that are going on in the world right now are possible, then you know no prepping host on YouTube is going to be able to convince them that the things that are happening right now could happen because they they literally are happening. So those types of people are, are, are never a target uh, audience of a prepping channel because you know their their minds are just closed to the idea of these things because again. If the fact that these things are literally happening isn't enough to convince you that they could literally happen, then, you know, you know, there's nothing that we can do about that. So I see that role of a prepping channel as being kind of moot at this point because uh, all the stuff that we're talking about, you know, could could happen is happening. You know, granted, there are other things that we talk about, too, like, you know, like, um, you know, asteroid impacts. And occasionally we talk about uh, aliens invading by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies, though the, the uh, percentage chance of that I wouldn't uh, rank as being particularly high. So there are other things that are possible. But certainly, if you're going to prep and prepare, you don't need more reason than what we're looking at on the ground right now. The idea that, you know, it might be difficult to get food for your family, it shouldn't matter whether that's coming from supply chain issues or disease issues or drought issues or or famine issues, or whether it's because of an asteroid impact. You know, the, the fact of the disaster itself is all you really need to know. So I see that function of prepping channels as kind of being moot. So that kind of removes one whole part of what we used to do. The other thing that we used to do, and I think this is even more important, uh, is uh, sharing solutions to that. You know, because it, it's all well and, well and good to identify a problem, but it doesn't do you any good unless you come up with a solution to the problem. And I know that's not a, the way a lot of people's brains work. A lot of people are just happy to say that there's a problem, point a finger, and then say who to blame about it, and they call that, you know, the end of the day. But for people who are preparedness minded, who have in their sort of build of how they're put together the idea that if there's a problem, I want to tackle that, I want to create a solution to that. You know, people that uh, don't wait for th people to come and help them, but want to help themselves and also to help other people. For people who live in that mindset, it doesn't make any sense just to identify a problem and then blame someone for the problem and then just end it there. We want to know, well, what do we do? And that was the, always the other thing that prepping channels uh, did here on YouTube. And again, I think it's the most important thing that we uh, did here on YouTube was to share solutions to a lot of these problems. Uh, so why is that a problem today? You know, what, why well, we should just continue with that? Well, the honest truth is that anyone who's hosted a prepping channel for five years or more has kind of covered everything. I mean, there's really not that much to know in order to get into prepping and preparedness. All you really need to do is ask yourself in your head, what are the things that I use on a daily, weekly, yearly basis that are important for myself and my family's well-being? And figure out ways of securing those things ahead of maybe not having access to them or uh, develop the skills that you would need to acquire those things were you to be in a situation where they weren't as easy to get as they usually are. Um, that's really all there is to it and again for anyone who's hosted a channel for you know five years plus we've kind of covered all that stuff even if the only access you had to information was just my channel alone and you got way more access to information than that but even if you only had my channel you'd be in pretty good shape because I've done you know a video on pretty much everything if you want to know how to grow food we cover that if we want to know how to can food we cover that you know how to uh, get clean water we cover that everything down to you know building your own house building your own structure you know we've kind of covered everything on this channel so what is the relevance of creating more content like that when it's so easily searchable here online and you know like I mentioned you're not limited just to my channel you have my channel and everybody else's if there if there is an interest a spark in you uh, to learn about any kind of a, a skill or a technique related to preparedness, it is just a search away. The only reason that uh, you know myself and other people will occasionally do refresher videos on things is because the way that the YouTube algorithm works is it really favors new stuff over old stuff. If I made a really kick-ass, awesome video about how to can uh, from your garden five years ago, and I made a like kind of half-ass one that's you know it, it's all right, but you know it, it's not as great as that five-year-old one. If I made that yesterday. YouTube is going to way favor the mediocre video from yesterday over the one that's five years old. And that's just, I mean, that's just the way YouTube seems to be set up is that uh, I see it all the time with my videos. They, they play for about like, you know, four days or a week or so, and then they just flatline. YouTube just cuts them off and doesn't allow them, uh, doesn't give impressions for people to see those videos anymore. So that, that's one reason why, you know, people here in the preparedness community will continue to kind of create videos on things is so that they will actually you know, get out to people, uh, you know, because YouTube is just always constantly crushing all, all, all the old videos. Not all the old videos. There's the odd 
you know, random old video that, you know, I have from years ago that's, that's still going. I have, I have no idea what the difference is between that and other videos, just all skill videos. But the reality that uh, YouTube prepping hosts are facing is that, you know, there's not a huge need for us to create that type of new content either. Because, like I said, it's all just a search away, and if you want to find out how to do X, Y, or Z, it's all already there. So where does that leave people uh, in this... Uh, YouTube prepping space environment. We don't need to convince people uh, that stuff's happening because anybody who has a working brain can see that you know these uh, disasters are unfolding all around us. We don't need to create more content about how to prepare yourself because we already have and it's all very easily searchable. So what is our new uh, what is our new role in all of this situation? Well, for a lot of prepping hosts they are starting to turn themselves into kind of daily news uh, uh, broadcast. And I, I think that's uh, been very helpful for me. Uh, you know, there's a lot of channels that do that, and I think it's a great way of kind of packing all the relevant information. But I wonder whether we can be more useful than simply just trying to compensate for the fact that, you know, the mainstream media doesn't tend to share a lot of these stories with people. And uh, I don't really know the answer to that question. That's why I want to do this video is to you know, kind of start talking about this. You know, what is the relevance of prepping channels in a world where clearly there are challenges that people would do well to prepare for? And we live in a world where all the answers to these questions are just a few keystrokes away. You know, so what is the relevance of continuing to host a prepping channel? I, I think that we offer continued awareness about these things, uh, that we can offer... Um, encouragement to people and I, th I think that's kind of where I see my channel settling is uh, a channel that continually encourages people that yes you can uh, do, do something about these things and um, and I am getting a, an awful lot of pushback against that new role uh, that I'm in I, I've heard from other prepping channel hosts who do kind of the, the uh, daily news thing they get a lot of pushback from people that are saying that everything that they're saying is untrue even though it clearly pans out and it turns out that it, the things that they're saying are not untrue that's the major pushback that they tend to be getting is people that don't want to believe these negative things are happening in the world they're getting pushed back from these people uh, you know uh, talking about uh, you know the same things people always have described uh, preppers as being is like oh you're also negative and doom and gloom and you live in uh, you know this uh, this uh, you live in this world of fear um, so if you turn your prepping channel into kind of a news uh, dissemination uh, service, that, those are the critiques you tend to get. But for myself, what I'm noticing a lot of, uh, whereas I'm trying to turn my channel into a, a source of encouragement for people, like, yes, you can, th these are the things that you can do, uh, you know, and to just be there to say, you know, I've done this, you know, these are the things that I've done, and, you know, start small, you know, you can get there. The big pushback that I personally get, and this uh, is funneling into the danger that I wanted to talk about later, the big pushback that I'm finding I'm getting is from people who are, I guess I'm going to use the word irritated, by that kind of positive can-do attitude. Uh, the people that I referenced earlier that when there's a problem in the world, they want to find out who to blame for it, and by find out I don't mean they get good information and get good data and then make a logical decision about who, who is to blame for it. It's like they, you know, pick a, uh, pick a uh, Goldstein out of a hat and they, you know, they, they, they choose their enemy. You know, if you're a liberal, you choose uh, some conservative. If you're, if you're a conservative, you choose some liberal. If you're, you know, conspiratorial minded, you choose, you know, it's like, it's the global elite that have, uh, you know, created all this. Um, people that want to stop there and stay there and don't want to go to the next step about, okay, well, what do we do about this? How do we make this better? Uh, I get an awful lot of pushback from people like that. Uh, I, I feel there's a lot of frustration uh, and that the ears are closed to the idea that these are challenges, this is difficult, this is you know frightening potentially, you know, if this is something that's new to you. Um, but there's a lot of pushback against the idea that these problems have solutions. Because if a problem has a solution, it suggests that you have a responsibility, maybe, to uh, try to enact that solution. And I think a lot of people do, that don't want that responsibility, they just want to stop with the blame, uh, you know, figure out who to, who to blame for something and then just end it there. There's a real pushback against that. And a lot of times, most of the time, uh, that blame lands on the haves. If someone sees themselves as the have-nots, you know, they're in that victim kind of mentality. If they see themselves as the have-not, 
they, they blame the haves. And that, that doesn't always just mean wealth. Uh, you know, frequently it means wealth. It can be, you know, you know, poor, you know, someone that's, uh, you know, a poor person is going to blame someone that's richer, you know, because, you know, that, that wealthy person is what caused all of their problems. And I'm not saying that wealthy people don't contribute to these problems. Certainly they do. Conspiracies certainly happen. It's a normal part of a human uh, makeup that you want to conspire with other people to try to improve your situation in life. That's totally real. Uh, but that doesn't mean that everything in the world is a conspiracy. And, okay, even if everything in the world were a conspiracy, well, what do you do about that? You don't just sit there and, and whine and complain and, and play a victim. Do something about that. Take the next step and, uh, you know, try to improve your, your life. You know, so some people are, you know, blaming wealthy people. Some people are blaming, uh, you know, people that have more political connections or have more friends. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, the haves can be any group. And this is where I want to talk about this danger that I see for the future. Right now, the haves are the people with political uh, influence. They are the people with wealth, with means. Those are the people that are frequently getting blamed for uh, you know, the problems of people in the world. And again, you know, I'm sure many of those people help to cause those problems. Um, but where do you take it from there? In the future, who are the haves going to be? Are the haves going to be the, the wealthy people? They got a ton of ones and zeros in their bank account. Well, if the dollar collapses, all those ones and zeros are going to just all turn into zeros, or, you know, <laughs> close there too. Who are going to be the haves in the type of future that a lot of preppers are preparing for? If there is a major collapse of the economy, is having a lot of, you know, paper wealth or digital wealth, is that going to make you a have? I'd suggest no. I would suggest the haves in a collapse economy aren't going to be the wealthy people. It's going to be the preppers. It could uh, you know, certainly be the politically connected people and the people with a, a large friend network, because I think those things certainly carry over, uh, you know, even in a uh, currency collapse. But in a real collapse economy, I think a lot of people are going to see those haves, see that enemy as being the people that prepared. Because right now, people look at people that have a lot of money in their bank account and they're like, you had so much, I have so little, that's not fair. You know, you must have done this to me in some way. In the future, people are going to look at their pantry. I have like nothing in my pantry, or I don't even have a pantry. And you got this giant pantry that looks like a grocery store. You somehow did this to me. And we already see stuff like that. Like during COVID, who was getting blamed when there were supply chain shortages? I know uh, I was catching blame uh, when there were mask shortages. Remember with COVID, right at the, be at the very beginning, the CDC said, said it wasn't even airborne. And then they were saying it is airborne and everybody should wear a mask. And then there were run on masks and, and the, the, the supply chain couldn't keep up with the demand for masks. So the CDC uh, solved that problem by saying, well, you don't actually need real respirators. You can just put any piece of old cloth over your face and you're good. Uh, and I, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, the cloth ca caught people's sneezes and did some degree of, of help, at least in that regard. But there were a lot of people that were still remembering what the the CDC had said after they said that it wasn't airborne, they remembered the part where the CDC said you should get good masks. They couldn't get any good masks. People were going crazy. People were blaming people like me, talking about how I was hoarding masks, how I was creating all these supply chain shortages. The fact of the matter is that I bought my masks years before anyone had even heard of COVID. Uh, if anything, uh, my actions to buy masks was propping up the industry uh, during a time when there wasn't a lot of interest in masks. And then when COVID came along, the industry was stronger for my pr uh, prior support of it. And the supply chain shortages or the supply chain issues were less severe because I'd stocked up uh, you know, prior to it. So on a logical uh, setting, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, the people that bought things when there weren't uh, in a shortage are somehow responsible for, you know, having hoarded things when there is a shortage. Um, you know, it doesn't have to make logical sense. I was still an enemy in a lot of people's minds, and that was just for masks. You know, it's one thing not to have a mask. It's another thing uh, to not have food and to see your children starving. So I think it's really important at the moment to start thinking about that. If you're a prepper and there are people around you that don't have what you have, you are going to be one of those haves. They're going to be the have not. You're going to be the have. And at the moment, the, ha uh, the haves in our society, uh, they've got some degree of protection for themselves. They've got private security details. Uh, they have um, uh, the types of things that uh, you can't really talk about here on YouTube. Um, personal protective devices. <laughs> Uh, that um, you know, can protect them uh, from the have-nots. Uh, but it's going to be kind of a different landscape when, uh, as opposed to there being a small number of haves who are super wealthy, you have a lot of people who are seen as being the haves, who are preppers, um, who you know, 
don't live in their gated communities, who don't have their private security details, uh, it's going to be really challenging for a lot of us uh, when suddenly we're the people who are catching that ire from people. People will be blaming us for their children starving. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely ridiculous. If anything, we've uh, helped to increase the food supply you know, in, the, in the, the days leading up to the shortages because we were buying things and, and, and supporting the industry, making the industry stronger uh, you know, when there wasn't as much demand. So if anything, you know, it's the exact reverse, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to be logical. And you and I, if you're a prepper, are going to catch blame for this. And this is what I see is getting, going from prepping 1.0, which is preparing for this uh, you know, change in the world, which we're experiencing, which we're living through right now, Ch uh, changing from that to living within that world. And that is going to be prepping 2.0, which is... Uh, Dealing with a whole different set of issues, you know, uh, dealing with uh, actually living within a prepping lifestyle and interacting, at least initially, with all the people who weren't. And there's different ways of dealing with that. Uh, how do the haves deal with it now? Well, they, they use, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, they use firearms. <laughs> they use firearms and they uh, hire people who have firearms and, you know, uh, force to, uh, you know, keep the other people at bay. They have put up fences, they have security guards who have firearms. The, the world of elites that um, very frequently criticize the idea of firearm ownership are themselves being protected by the things that they criticize, which I think is all you need to know about the divide and conquer kind of politics that we're living in right now. You know, if, you li if you're listening to your politicians who are telling you who to hate, you know, very frequently there are an enormous amount of contradictions there and I, I'm more of a look at what someone's doing not what they're saying kind of person if you want to know what they really believe anyway getting back to the point the people today they use uh, they use firearms they use force to try to protect themselves from the have-nots the haves use force and uh, you know, weapons to protect themselves from the have-nots. In the future, I mean, that's one thing we talk about here on prepping channels, is that you can use firearms as a way of protecting yourself. And I, I personally have a lot of mixed feelings about that because, and I own firearms. I should say that right off the bat. I own firearms. You know, we're, we're, we're ready to go on that. But I know that it's not without a cost. And I know that needing to use a firearm to protect yourself is itself a failure of having prepped for that situation ahead of time. You know, you might be thinking, well, the prepping is buying the firearm and the bullets. That, that is the prepping. Well, that is, that's a, a choice of last resort in my, in my view. And that is a failure of, of prepping for that eventuality more effectively. And I think that people should have that as a, as a last resort so that, you know, you and your family don't fall prey, uh, you know, if you've prepared, if you've failed to prepare in other ways. But that doesn't mean it's not important to prepare in all those other ways. And I think the most important way that you can prepare is by trying to get rid of the have-nots now. And I don't mean like go on a purge and kill all the have-nots. What I mean is try to convert those have-nots into allies as opposed to potential future enemies. Uh, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that... Uh, I, I have no idea what his exact quote is, but I, I think he's famous for having said that, uh, that idea that the best way to deal with an enemy is to turn them into a, I think he either said friend or an ally. Um, I, would, I would really agree more with the idea of ally. You don't have to be friends with people to be allies with people. And I think that that is prepping 2.0 right now, that we really need to start thinking about. If you are a prepper, if you are more prepared than the people around you, you need to understand that it is inevitable. And that's not something that you hear a lot on prepping channels. You know, we talk about, well, you hear a lot on prepping channels, but you don't hear it uh, from credible people on prepping channels usually. You know, we, we deal about percentage chances of things. You know, there's a chance there could be a drought. There's a chance there could be a war. It is inevitable that in a collapsed environment, people who are desperate are not going to see the people who have stuff as being those haves, those enemies. Um... And we need to head off that problem because that will absolutely happen. And if you feel that it is very likely that we're going to be moving into an age of scarcity, and if you listen to any of our political leaders, I mean, that's what they're all par uh, parroting right now, and this is one of the situations where I actually agree with them. If you believe that, you must start taking action now. That is what prepping is. Prepping isn't, uh, you know, giving yourselves the tools so, you know, in the future you can kind of, uh, you know, manage or muddle through a situation that you could have better prepared for earlier. We can better prepare for that inevitable future situation if we start networking with people now, if we start helping people now, if we start making 
uh, creating relationships with people now. And again, you don't have to see these people as friends, just as allies. The idea is if you can create in someone's mind the sense that they are better off with you alive and well than they would be with you dead on the floor and them taking all of your food, that is going to be a win for you. You want to be seen by the people around you as being more of an asset to them, alive and well and respected, versus just an, you know, an asset that they can you know, pillage. And that's tricky. That takes uh, interpersonal communications. That takes all the things that our world's failing at right now. Humans don't tend to be really particularly great at that. And, uh, you know, I'll be totally honest. A lot of people that are in, into prepping aren't, perp uh, aren't particularly great at that. But just because you don't have a skill set um, in a certain area doesn't mean that area is not super, super critically important. So we need to start thinking about that. Prepping 2.0. What are you doing today to try to make it so that the have-nots in your area and... You know, even go beyond that, uh, the have-nots of the world. What are you doing today to try to make it so that the have-nots of the world in the future are going to see you as more of an asset to them, alive and well, versus dead on the floor as they carry away your Snickers bars <laughs> or whatever they're pulling out of your pantry? Start thinking about that right now. Leave some comments. What are your thoughts about that? How are you addressing that? You know, some people, they just go off in the woods. And they want to get away from people. And that's what I've done. I mean, they, the closest, my, my mailbox is, you know, a million miles away. The, the closest neighbor is, I don't know, almost a mile down the road. Uh, there are um, advantages to being isolated. But th this is just, this just buys me time. Uh, being this kind of isolated, uh, in, in this kind of isolation. If I lived in a city, I would be being bombarded by all these interpersonal issues right away, right from the get-go. I mean, 72 hours in, bang, it's, it, it, you know, everything's uh, on at that point. Out in the country, I'm going to have some padding of time, but that doesn't mean that the problem is gone forever. So you can't just move out to the sticks and act like your problem solved. The only thing you could do is go to another planet. I suppose. And a lot of the world's elites are talking about that right now. Like Elon Musk wants to, you know, uh, get a moon base on... I'm just going to... I'm going to continue what I was about to say. It's stupid. Elon Musk wants to get a moon base on Mars. Um, so um, that one just rolled right off my tongue, didn't it? Um, but for the rest of us, we need to have a plan of how to address this. Uh, and I would love to hear your thoughts uh, because uh, even people that are have a lot of great interpersonal skills and have a lot of training in this it's still a really challenging thing and our world is a testament to that right now uh, interpersonal skills are hard for people especially in large groups and that's why the world is the way that it is but it's super super important so you know, you can't just drop it just because it's, it's difficult. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope this wasn't too much of a rambling video. I think it's really important. Prepping, you know, especially here on YouTube, I think has got to change. It's got to be something different because we don't need to convince people that bad things can happen. We don't need to, uh, you know, create any more content on how to do things. That doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to do it. You know, when I find a new way to doing something, I'm like, I, you know, I get excited. I like to share it with you guys. But I think we need to redefine our role in the world today. And we need to start getting ready for prepping 2.0 because... That is going to be the real end game. Uh, you know, after we, we move into this new world, we need to figure out how we're going to live and survive and thrive in that world. Because our lives and our families' lives depend on it. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.